Well, you guys literally asked for it, so here it is. If you want to vote for what you see next, join the Discord server. I make sure to involve my community in anything I can. We'd love to have you there. Today we're going to talk about the top 10, de facto, most important, most needed, most fleeted, most heated. One hour later. Most heated. Um, most heated. How long has he been doing that? Most, most, most coveted skills, in my opinion. Of course, your list might be different, and God, along with everyone else, knows that you know the most about hacking. Yes, yes, yes. However, elitism aside, here's my, in my opinion, objectively reasonable top 10 list if you're starting out hacking. You should especially pay attention to and consider honing these skills. And of course, this isn't an all-inclusive list. This may be a series, so comment down below what other skills you think is important for someone starting out in penetration testing or ethical hacking. And who knows, maybe you can end up in a future video. That's if you're up to the task. Put on your anonymous mask, talk to Stop! Stop. Hey man, f you guys. A total cluster f I know. I'm starting off with this as a skill, because although the motivation should come naturally to you, who wouldn't want to be a super elite hacker? I mean, I'm sure right now your motivation is at an all-time high. You already placed an order for the Mr. Robot Blu-ray box set. Your guy Fox mask is coming to your doorstep as we speak, but listen to me. There will be a time not too far away from right now when many of you are just going to stop trying and give up, never to return again. It's like the gym a couple of months after a new year's resolution. I've seen it happen so many times and I've done it myself countless times too. And you know what? If it's not for you, then it's not for you. That doesn't mean you can't do something else in IT that may appeal to you more. This field, moreover cybersecurity as a whole, has an extremely high burnout or turnover rate. And it's no wonder why we always have to be on our toes, keeping up to date with the new techniques, vulnerabilities, patches, etc. We need to sharpen our skills constantly, otherwise they get dull. A samurai is only as sharp as his dullest sword. For example, I like to think that my network penetration skills are decent, but my web application skills, past the basic stuff that everybody knows, is complete lizard shit. Thus, I'm trying to sharpen that area of my skill set, and it's what you're gonna have to do as well in order to be an effective person in this field. Personally, as someone in the red team, I can't help but oogle at the forbidden fruit that is digital forensics. I find it fascinating, and there's nothing stopping you from learning as much as you can. And if you're on the red team, learning how the blue team handles their engagements, what they look out for, will make you a much more effective red teamer. Because now you know what they're looking out for, you can find ways to circumvent or bypass these detections. So bonus tip, don't feel like you have to stick to one thing. Cybersecurity isn't a linear path. You'll see that many different fields come into play and the more you know overall, whatever you are or do, you'll do it better. Another thing of discipline I should mention, if I haven't already, is the subset of discipline, persistence. I have this friend, recently she was trying to set up Cali for the first time, so we did it. Six fuck times, every single time something ended up going wrong and we'd have to start from scratch. But you know what? She had the persistence to keep on trying to install this stupid idiot OS. Even now as I'm recording this, I'm sure she accidentally deleted the bootloader or some bullshit. But my point is, if she was to give up after the second or third time of Cali shit in the bed, what makes you think she'd be able to persist through the hundreds if not thousands of things we do in hacking all the time that end up failing? Persistence is vital. Why the hell is failure a skill, you might ask? It's not per se. However, I wholeheartedly believe that dealing with failure <laughs> Dealing with failure and utilizing failure is a completely necessary skill. Sooner or later, there will be a time when you attempt something and it completely fails. Maybe it's an interview, maybe it's a certification exam, maybe it's your blood test, and all these things could have just been solved by studying harder. For me, it was my first attempt at the CRTP certification and the OSCP certification. Let me just tell you, there isn't anything out there in the observable universe that can Saitama punch your eagle like failing and failing hard. However, I can also confidently say that I learned more than I could ever from my failures. My failures told me with tough love exactly where I'm lacking and what I need to improve on. So yes, you could sulk after failing at something and you most likely will. It's in our nature to do that, failing something, someone, or whatever. Or you can use your failures as the coal that refuels the fire in you. People that use failure as a skill will always choose the latter. I know some great hackers that are super elite, but their write-ups or reports smell like mummy feet. Listen to me, guys. This is a soft skill that you need to get developed. Hacking is about breaking into mainframes, running into people with RFID cloners, turning off a prison's fucking power, power, whatever. Sure, but what you rarely get told is the other half of it. Reporting. You will need to report 
a lot. No one will take you seriously if your report or write-ups have a shit ton of spelling mistakes in them, grammar mistakes in them, or whatever. But listen, not everyone speaks English, okay? So it doesn't even matter if you don't speak fluent English. That shouldn't be the marker of a good report. The marker of a good report is how detailed it is and how accessible it is to everyone that's involved. If you're starting out in this field, you probably think, oh my goodness, I can't wait for the CEO to read my report and how thorough it is and all those cool little intricacies and see how much of a elite hacker I am. Is this it then? Thank you, Octavius, you may go. Now then, let's see what we have here. What? What the f*** is this sh It's longer than a paragraph. Security? Track down the idiot who wrote this and kill his family. Whoa! Yeah, so the CEO doesn't give a f about your cool little hacks. They literally don't have the time to care. They care about the potential losses and the stature of the infrastructure, the posture, which is why you must segment your report for the people reading it. Yes, people, as in multiple persons. <laughs> you should have a section for the CEO that outlines what you found, the effects of these findings, and remedies. <laughs> remedies. Only then can you get into detail for the other nerds that want to hear about your super cool hacks. My point is, there are people that can hack like nobody's business. But to have such a nice skill, only to have it tainted with crappy report, reflects so badly on you. And this extends to write-ups as well. Take pride in your work and make it worth sharing. A good hacker needs to be like a hawk. If a quark moves somewhere, you ought to be able to sense it. If someone on the other side of the planet sneezes, you better be blessing them. I'm kidding, of course, but as we all should know by now, the most important phase of any hacking engagement is information gathering or reconnaissance. This means that we need to have our eyes wide open and look for anything that we can leverage or anything we can do or find to increase our attack surface. Sometimes these things are super small, like a specific version or build that's vulnerable to X, a specific kind of attack that only works on Y, an OS specific thing a jig for Z, etc. You're gonna inevitably train this skill. And another cool thing you'll end up training, which I've started to refer to as the hacker sense, is going to come in handy more times than I can count. Let me prove it. I'll read an expert. God. I'll read an excerpt from my blog where I first talked about a hacker sense. To preface, I had failed my CRTV because although I thought I knew enough, turns out I didn't. Like, not even close. I grossly underestimated the exam and literally couldn't find any potential attack vectors or anything. Boohoo, whatever. Next thing you know, post failure, my second time around, I'm training super hard on my enumeration. If I never failed, I wouldn't have known how poor my enumeration was, so I thanked myself for failing. As if it's something I did voluntarily. Anyways, come my second attempt, it was a whole other story. I was immediately able to see potential attack paths, and it honestly felt like a spidey sense. So needless to say, you need attention to detail. In order to utilize this skill, you need exposure to these things and practice, like many other things in the field. Let's face it, you're most likely using Windows right now, or Apple, or your phone, or whatever. But well, the fact of the matter is that most of the things you'll end up exploiting are either going to be a Windows host or a Linux machine, and you will need to be proficient in both of these platforms. But fear not, as with all things, you will eventually get used to them and inevitably learn them for the most part with exposure and time. Think about it, you you own a BMW. It's got BMW specific parts, and say you take it to the mechanic, you want your mechanic to know about cars, sure, but you also want him to know about the specifics of your car. I, okay, why did I choose that analogy? I know nothing about cars but you know what i mean people ask me all the time how they could learn linux and there literally isn't any advice that's better than literally just install a linux vm and start playing around learn the basics of the linux specific features and commands and once you have the basics down keep on going until it's second nature and you can do it in your sleep plus as a hacker you definitely need basic to intermediate level computer skills that's non-negotiable learn to move around on your respective platform learn to update the system and tools learn the internals and features if you can so that you know what to look for when hacking or patching Okay, hey, hey, don't misunderstand me here. I'm not saying that you need to be a master programmer or a master of language before you start hacking. Lord knows I'm nowhere close to that. If anyone tells you that you need to be some sort of program prodigy to hack, fling them into the stratosphere. Sure, it definitely helps to be fluent in a language, especially the common ones for hacking like Bash, Python, and PowerShell, or whatever it is. But the thing I need you to understand is that you need to just be able to read basic code. This is an invaluable asset. If you can read basic code, number one, you can understand what the goddamn thing you're running is doing. It's easier to reverse engineer the inner workings of something. You can protect yourself as well in case there's some funky business going on inside the script. And if something goes wrong or isn't set properly within the script, which it will be a lot of times, you'll most of the time have boilerplate code that you need to fix, you can easily fix it. Again, with exposure and time, you'll naturally get better the more and more you do it. And when you start hacking, try making some of your own tools based on pre-existing ones. A lot of people ask how to go about programming stuff, and I get it, you're new and it's all so overwhelming, but the concept of programming stays the same no matter what level you're at. Think of programming
programming in the smallest steps, <laughs> steps that you can. Say you want to make a program that when you run it, brings you some common post exploitation scripts to your current directory so that you can serve it on your machine and then download it or upload it to your victim's computer. Well, think about the steps you need to do in order to do that. Imagine yourself literally doing all those steps. Number one, you need to copy the files over to your current directory, right? That's step one. And then next, you just need to start serving the current directory. That's step two. Do you see? By splitting your program into tiny doable steps, you just made it so much easier to understand, first of all, and more importantly, to program. After all the big steps, you can start doing some fancy extra shit, like choosing which interface to host the files on, etc. But get the groundwork done first. When you start off, it's recommended to choose a high level programming language. This doesn't mean a hard programming language. When you're starting out, every single language is hard. It means a language that isn't as close to the CPU as, for example, C or assembly is. Those are low level languages. And unless you've got a skull the size of a fing beach ball or the Arc de Triomphe, I wouldn't suggest going for a low level language as your first. If you're brand, brand new to all of this, you will get overwhelmed, start high, and then end up low. Once you master a language, you can pick up any other language, or so I've heard. I'm still trying to master some of my to piggyback off of the sixth skill, we should address automation. You will run across a bunch of tedium on both Linux and a bunch of tedium on both Linux and Windows. After you started programming past the basics, you should try to automate the boring stuff. You don't even need to start scripting or whatever, you can just start by making a bunch of aliases for the simpler things. For example, take a look at how many I have and their purposes. For the bigger stuff, you can start utilizing your programming expertise to rid yourself of the tedious, boring stuff. I personally have an entire set of tools I've created solely to remove the hassle of some CTF stuff. I seriously urge you to try to create your own renditions of these things and anything that you've found boring or too monotonous automate it into a single command or script if you can. This is an invaluable skill to have as, as a hacker. We're going to be running a ton of commands, so it's it's required to streamline most of the blah 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 ones. Us computer folk, we're a lazy bunch. We all know this. And we all know that if there's something mildly inconvenient, then it warrants 300 times the effort to make it 10% more efficient. So the same principles apply. Work smarter, not harder, although not at all. Automate the boring stuff, streamline the tedious stuff, you got this. We talked about geeky sh like Linux and Windows, but I would be doing you all of the service if I didn't talk about something even nerdier, networking. You better be super familiar with how a device speaks to another or lies on a network. Without it, how are you even going to scan your first machine? How would you understand the results? How would you connect to any service on your target? How would you route your packets? How would you port forward? Could you use proxy chains? Could you use tunnels? Could you auto route? Could you access a segmented network? Would you be able to pivot? How would you get past firewalls? What about scanning a subnet? Do you know CIDR notation? What about filtered ports? You ever do a, a mother ping sweep? Did you know that not all devices respond to ICMP type 8 echo requests, aka motherfucking ping? Do you get what I'm saying? You gotta relearn some handshakes. You gotta drown in the barrage that is UDP. You need to understand some motherfucking network. And listen, yo, I know it's a lot. I understand. However, the bulk of your understanding of hacking and your effectiveness as a hacker will depend on how you perform inside and around a network. On this network, there could be web applications, standalone servers, firewalls, whatever it is, and the ports and services on them. It will obviously take some time to understand it. No one is telling you to figure this shit out in a single goddamn day. So take your time. Really, really try to learn and absorb it. And once you do, it's knowledge that doesn't dissipate. It only ever compounds. There was this time that I was trying to understand the layout of a network. It was segmented. And on the target host that I compromised, there was this NIC or network interface card pointing to another network. I had never heard of proxy chains or tunnels or port forwards or auto routes or whatever, you know, or what have you. So I had to learn it. And there is no feeling that emulates the euphoria you get when you traverse through networks like this, man. It's the best. Everyone loves bug bounties, the allure of them, the illustrious shine, the sinful snap back when you bite into the crispy bounty from a super sick bug stop. Web applications are a huge attack surface, and most networks that you come across in your training doing CTFs will most likely incorporate a couple of web servers in them. If you don't know what a web server is, click on the annotation to my other video where I explain some common hacking terms. This is simply because everyone uses websites, either to get something or to give something. You're on YouTube right now, and YouTube needs to make sure that its website is secure. Otherwise, who knows what'll happen? And no company or site is perfect. Big companies get hacked all the time, all the damn time. Where am I even going with this? Oh yeah. Okay, so we talked about 
networking, but web applications are a completely different beast altogether. It's its own subfield of hacking. There are so many vulnerabilities to learn, so many techniques to master from SQL injections to cross-site scripting to remote file inclusions, local file inclusions, directory traversals, unrestricted file uploads, authentication bypasses, etc. etc. You will need to understand backend software that's being used, like a database or the website itself. For example, like a CMS or something, WordPress, Joomla. Some companies will literally pay you money to find vulnerabilities on their site outlined in the scope of engagement. Don't just blindly hack a website and expect that they'll pay you. That's a quick way to end up in the hole. These are called bug bounties and I know eventually I'm going to get someone that's going to ask me to cover bug bounties or make videos about them. But listen guys, I personally do not like bug bounties. I don't know why, but every time someone says bug bounty, it makes me want to light myself on fire. It could be that I always see the same damn comment. It feels like I'm so conditioned to get annoyed at the first sight or talk about bug bounties, but that might be a stretch. It's just that everyone has this false notion that if you know how to hack a website, you'll make bank from the bug bounties, and that's not the case. Maybe it is for the select few, the top 1% of the top 1% sure. However, for most of us, it's going to be quite harsh and rude awakening only if you're in it for the money. If you're going into bug bounties solely for, with the idea that you're going to be making a lot of money, then you're going to get let down. Hoard. And it's the wrong mindset to go into it with. You should sincerely be wanting to help someone fix their website, trying to find bugs and stuff. The Cyber Mentor made an absolute gem of a video on this topic alone that better encapsulates what I'm trying to say than I could ever voice. So please give it a watch if you're starting to learn about how to hack solely for bug bounties. Also, I know that me saying I don't like bug bounties is going to trigger some people, so let me be perfectly clear. I don't personally like bug bounties. I think they attract a large number of people that are in it for the wrong reasons, and to be quite honest, I don't see myself doing them anytime in the future. It's just a preference. I personally like networking, binary, Wi-Fi, etc. Those sides of hacking more because it intrigues me more. However, I will never discredit the value or need for bug bounties. It's insanely good and important and that companies have this initiative and all the power to the badasses that spend so much time researching and reporting these vulnerabilities. And I won't deny it, there have been some super cool techniques that I've seen tossed around. All my respect for the web hackers out there. Keep up the great work, guys. Is this even a surprise? Our greatest asset is our curiosity. You have a trillion questions you need the answers to, I know. But, and I mean this with all of my heart, there is nothing that annoys us more than being asked a question that is so easily answered with a Google search. If you're on Reddit, there's a subreddit called r slash hacking or some shit, I forget. But like every three days or so, someone asks a question like, how do I start hacking? Or where do I start? It's happened so much that the subreddit itself has pinned the answers to these common questions on the homepage of the subreddit. And still, how do I start hacking? Or where do I start? <sighs> I understand, maybe you're just excited and you want to talk to people about your new journey, I get it. But all that ends up happening is you inadvertently just tell us that you're not, you can't be bothered to do a simple search that would answer your question right away. It shows us that you're not even taking your first step seriously. Hey, it's, uh, it's me from the future. Please allow me to make myself extremely clear. I am not, nor would I ever try to discourage someone, especially a beginner, from asking questions. Please don't misunderstand me here. I am trying to, hopefully, prevent beginners from asking low effort questions. It's not the questions that frustrate us, it's the questions that have no effort put into them, i.e. low effort questions that bother us. With that out of the way, let's get back to the video. However, there are genuine times when you need to ask a question and you can't find the answer to one. That's totally fine. Live Overflow made an amazing video about this as well and how to ask a good question. The general rule of thumb is Google first and if you can't find an appropriate answer then ask around. And when you ask around, be detailed. Don't just fucking say how to hack this shit, you know? Be like, this is what I've tried. This is what I think is happening. You give your insight so that people know what you've tried. I mean, shit, there's even AI out there that can pretty much answer any question you have for you now. And I don't mean to be nasty, but after hearing the same questions over and over again, with the first page of Google answers just waiting to be discovered, it really eats a piece of you. Maybe it's a skill that needs developing. We really underestimate how daunting everything is for a newcomer after a while, so we should do better to not get annoyed so easily. I know. If there was one skill I would urge you to master, one skill before any others, it is to learn how to research or use Google. You never stop doing it ever, not in this field. There's even special ways to search for specific things or on specific search engines. For instance, there are so many ways to find something on Google and you could learn Google dorks. Here's a website that shows some specially constructed dorks. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure that I left out some critical things out of this list because there's more vacuum in my skull than there is oxygen, but I plan on making this a series along with a couple of other videos. So if there's another skill that you think a beginner should have, include it in the comments below. Remember that the universe doesn't stop teaching, so you should never stop learning. If you made it this far, it would be awesome if you could subscribe, check out our Discord server. I hope you enjoyed this video and that will do it for this video. As always, until next time, goodbye.